and welcome to the Crafty Diamond. I am Debbie. If you are new, welcome. If you are not new, welcome back. Today is my weekly whip and chat. And if you are not familiar with that, that is a work in progress. I am going to be working on a diamond painting. This one is the Four Crows of the Apocalypse and it's by Cheryl Baker. It is from Craftably, and unfortunately, Craftably um, is no longer selling diamond paintings, but you might be able to find something in a D stash. And I am doing this for the Cheryl Baker event that is hosted by Cindy over on Facebook and also on Instagram. I just started on this, so I'm not going to zoom out and show you what I've done. I've literally done one square and it is just the start um, of the bottom of the, I think it's the hay, or it could even be a tree. I'm not exactly sure because I do have this covered in release paper up until a certain point. But I wanted to go ahead and get started on this because I am already behind on it um, since today is the 5th, or maybe it's the 6th, I think it's the 6th of August. And I am just now getting started on this but I've been out of town, so because of that, I didn't take it with me, and I wanted to go ahead and get started on it. So I, I was hoping to get a little bit more done, but didn't get home until later than expected, and I will discuss that with you guys. But with my whip and chats, I do like to work on a diamond painting, and you can either work on... A diamond painting or whatever you want to or just simply treat this like you would a podcast and that's what I do a lot of times when I'm, I'm listening to diamond painting um, whip and chats or sometimes I will even diamond paint most time I'll diamond paint um, but it just depends on what I'm doing and what's going on but before we get started let me know how you guys are doing I would love to hear and what are you currently working on and how is your August going so far? It's hard to believe that before I know it, it'll be the middle of the month and I don't feel like I've gotten anything done but didn't take anything on vacation with me. So I will get caught up eventually but we had a really nice time, and for those of you um, that are new or you haven't um, listened to um, the last few of my whipping chats, my youngest daughter Paige and I flew to South Dakota to see my oldest daughter. We have never been to South Dakota, and we wanted to go and visit her. It was really our turn to go and visit her. She wanted um, us to see where she's living right now and also, you know, see her apartment and just different things in her city. So we did, and we flew out last Thursday. Flew out Thursday morning. No problems whatsoever with our flight going. So I thought, all right, we have this licked because every time that Maddie has come home and it doesn't matter if she um, is, you know, how she's flying, if she's flying round trip or if she is having to um, have a layover, she's had problems. And usually coming's not bad, but it's always going home and that's what happened to us, but I'll get to that part. But going, we had a really nice flight. We did worry that we were going to miss our connecting flight, but we got there and Paige and I were running to the gate. Madison said, oh, um, the St. Paul Airport isn't that bad it's not hard to get from one gate to the next you know no problem and we got there and i'm like okay we're coming in at like gate c1 we need to go to c21 so to me that was like okay that's not very far we'll just go 
and we'll walk around, you know, for a few minutes. We'll have plenty of time because it's not that much, you know, in between C1 and C21. And we got there and I'm like, okay, this isn't good. C21, you had to go up two escalators, go around a corner. It was absolutely crazy. It took us longer than what we thought. And I looked at my watch and so I told Paige, we're going to have to pick it up because it's saying that they're starting to board and we have to hurry up. So we started running in the airport carrying two heavy backpacks because we both took our computers and we got to the gate and it said on my my flight app that they were already boarding and I'm like okay they're boarding we've got to go we do not want to miss this flight we do not want to be stuck in St. Paul so I mean we were just running and just it was crazy we got to the gate and as we were getting to the gate, the gate agent came on the intercom and said, this flight is delayed. We are not going to be boarding at this time. And so Paige and I just looked at each other and just shook our heads. We were exhausted from running so much. Apparently we're both out of shape. And they were going to be delayed because there was an issue. I don't remember what the issue was. I don't know what they even said, but it's going to be delayed for an hour. So we decided to go ahead, get something to eat because we hadn't had anything to eat. And it was already after lunchtime. We had been flying for two and a half hours. And so we went, we got something to eat, we were able to take a bathroom break, we got back over there, had time to finish eating our sandwich, and then we actually boarded the plane. So that wasn't that bad, and we still got there at the same time that we were supposed to. So I thought that was kind of weird that, you know, we... We boarded later. We still got there at the same time. I guess that wasn't really an hour. It would maybe have been 45 minutes or, you know, whatever. But they were able to make up the time. So, you know, no worries with that. And then we got to Madison's and I had called her or I texted her and just told her what time that we were going to land. So she went into the airport in South Dakota, which is a very small airport. It's a, it's a nice, it's a sweet airport. It reminded me of like the old bus terminals from years and years and years ago when I was a little kid. And my mom and I would often go and visit my aunt and my mother wouldn't, she did not drive. And so we would get on the bus and we would go and visit my aunt for a couple of weeks and and my cousins and so it just kind of reminded me of an old bus depot and it was easy to get around there you know so much easier than atlanta definitely easier than the st paul airport and then we actually went and checked into our hotel and the hotel was really nice as well where um, we were staying. It was only about 10, 15 minutes from Madison's apartment. And then we just did something simple. On Thursday night for dinner, we went to a, it was a pizza buffet. And you know, it was okay. It was just a typical pizza buffet. It was almost like a place that had closed down here years ago that both my kids liked called Stevie B's. And it was just a buffet where you pay, you know, one price and you get to eat unlimited pizza. They also there had um, some food, some hot food that was on the side that you could get. And they had fried chicken. And I thought, I don't know what fried chicken is going to be like uh, in the Midwest, you know, area. But I didn't get any of that. But I did get some pizza. I got some side salad. Paige got pizza and some noodles. And they had games, you know, different things for kids. 
we didn't do any of that. And then after we left there, Paige was just really tired and she said that um, her stomach was bothering her a little bit. I think she had gotten overheated. And when Paige gets overheated, she doesn't know how to handle herself very well. And so her anxiety started kicking in. And so I told Madison, you know, if you want to come over and, you know, come to the hotel for a little bit, you know, then, you know, feel free. But I think that she just needs to go and relax for the rest of the evening. And so Madison came over to the hotel just for a little bit and then they left and we just had, you know, the night and they had a pool and a hot tub that were indoors. And that was one of the things that this hotel, which I thought was a bit pricey for, you know, where it was located, I was kind of surprised, but it was a really nice hotel. And I thought that for the hotel that, you know, their claim to fame on their website was they had an indoor pool. And so Paige wanted to go swimming. We went ahead, changed clothes, went downstairs to go swimming. Paige goes, and we're about to get into the pool. We put our, just our feet in the pool. And I'm like, I can't do this. I am sorry. If you want to swim, you go ahead and swim. I'm going to get in the hot tub. And um, I'm just going to relax a little bit. The pool, yeah, it was an indoor pool, which, you know, that was great. That's what we were so excited about going on this trip was being able to swim in a heated indoor pool. Well, I just assumed that the pool was heated because it was indoors. You know, it makes sense to me. And if it's an indoor pool, it should be heated, right? Well, it didn't say that it was heated. I am the one that just assumed that because all the indoor pools that I'd ever been in were heated. Because how else are you supposed to get into the pool because it's going to be cold? That is why the pool was absolutely frigid. Because the pool wasn't heated. So we ended up not swimming. And I did get in the hot tub. Was not able to get in there until Sunday night. The night that before we were leaving. Because all during the week we would go and I guess we waited until it was too late. And they had a bunch of people that were just sitting around the hot tub. I guess they were friends. And they were just drinking and talking and cutting up. Well, I didn't feel comfortable getting into the hot tub with them. And Paige said it was just too cold for her to swim. So we ended up not going until the last day. And that was fine because it was just us. And that was the only thing that I really, that was, well, I shouldn't say only, that was one of the main things that I did not like about the, the actual hotel because I was a little disappointed about it because I just assumed oh, we're going to be able to, to swim during the day or, you know, in the evenings. And it was a nice pool, but it was just the fact that it was so cold and, I thought, well, how in the world could you swim in this pool in the winter? Because their winters are really cold. They get a lot of snow there where Madison lives. But yet, they have this really nice pool. And it's not insulated that great where the, the pool and the hot tub were. So, I don't know how much activity, you know, that, that their pool really gets. We did go... I guess it was Sunday night that we went in there and there were some kids that were swimming. And I guess that, you know, kids don't care if they freeze. Paige was that way and so was Madison, you know, when they were younger. But as you get older, you can't stand the pool being as cold as it was. So that was disappointing. But we were so busy anyway that we didn't take time. Madison has a pool at her apartment that's an outdoor pool and we were going to go there and ended up not doing that either. 
and it was right across from her apartment, from her apartment building, but we ended up being so busy that now I'm going to have to go back to work just to relax, but we did. We had just a super nice time. I really enjoyed the landscape in South Dakota. Madison says there's nothing here. It's so flat. We just hate it. And I could see why that they would. You know, I could easily see why because, you know, they're younger. They want, you know, to do stuff. They want to be more um, sociable, I guess, just to have options of things to do. They don't necessarily like the food there. And, you know, it's different because Madison has grown up in the South. That's where she's from. And so, yeah, our food is a little bit different than, than what she's used to there. But it was really nice. She has a really nice apartment. Um, she had it nice and cleaned up. You know, got to see her animals again. I miss her fur babies. So that, you know, that was fun getting to just spend time with Madison and her fiance and, you know, of course, Paige. And Friday, we got up. We went to a state park that was out in the middle of absolute nowhere, but it wasn't that far from her apartment. And we went hiking and took some pictures there. And so that was a lot of fun. And um, they took their dogs and the dogs had a wonderful time. She has a pug and then she has a, another dog that's still a puppy. She's not quite a year yet. She is part Schnauzer and um, part Bichon Frise. And we've had a beast Bichon when Madison was little. And Paige too, but that was Madison's dog. We got her when Madison was 18 months. So we had that dog for a really long time. And her dog reminded me so much of our dog that we had to pass away years ago. And her dog was so excited to be able to go even her pug liked to hike, and that's, I thought that was kind of unusual because pugs usually don't like to do that, but her pug was raring to go, and she had been hiking, and then we went to one stream, and her dog started wading in, her puppy, and actually ended up jumping in, but she had her she did have her collar on with the leash, so they were able to, you know, eat. They didn't let go of it, but she was, you know, dog paddling, and she got so excited, and she had such a good time, and Paige and I um, went on most of the hikes. There was one that was a little more rocky than the other trails that we had gone on, and so I told them, y'all just go ahead and go without us and we will be fine. I'm gonna um, take her back and we're gonna, we're gonna start heading back over to where we left the car. And so we did that while they were finishing up hiking. And that just, it was a very hot day. Of course, it was one of the hottest days that they have had in South Dakota since they had been there. On Thursday, the humidity there wasn't bad at all. It was nothing compared to what we are used to, and so it was good. But on Friday, it was tough. I don't know if it was because we were so active, but we um, did that on Friday. That took us all day, and then we went and had a really nice dinner at um, a place that it looks kind of like a gas station almost. I mean, it was, that's how it was the inside. That's how the interior, you know, the decorations. And so we had some really good food there. We had something called cheese curds. And I'm like, I've never heard of cheese curds. What, what is this? 
and basically it was just mozzarella sticks but better and Paige loves mozzarella sticks but she wasn't crazy about the cheese curds and we had gotten an appetizer that was just a variety and um, it had fried pickles and I haven't had fried pickles in years and so I love those that was really good then they had something else I forgot what it was but it was rather spicy I think it was um oh what was that it was some kind of peppers. It may have been jalapenos that was like fried jalapenos. That's what it was. It was fried jalapenos. And so Madison's fiance loves spicy food. He lives in California from years and years. I think that they were originally from Arizona is what Madison was telling me. I'm pretty sure. But he is just a spicy connoisseur. Loves spicy now, Madison liked moderate spice when she was living with us and growing up, but now she's gotten to where she really likes spicy food about like, not, I don't think as much as him, but as spicy as him, but she is really enjoying spicy food now, and so they ate that. I tried it and just took one small bite, and I'm like, um, no, 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 this is not for me. Uh, I can't do this. So I ordered a sandwich for dinner and that was really good. So I went to places that, you know, I don't, we don't have here. So that was nice. So that was our Friday. And then they went back over to the, to the hotel. We did spend some time at their apartment before dinner and they didn't have Netflix, but I was able to get Netflix on my, my Fire Stick. And so we were able to use that that I brought with me to get on Netflix. And so we watched just some, some different, a couple of different things. Um, and then we had gone to dinner then that pretty much once we got back Paige and I were just on our computers for a little bit I was watching some YouTube I did have to get some work done so got quite a bit of work done on Friday and then Saturday we went to a carnival a fair that was in town and I hadn't been to the fair in years I thought oh this will be fun and it was a lot of fun. It was kind of pricey, um, but I thought, you know what? Don't think about that. We're just having fun. We're gonna ride a few rides. We ended up staying there for a very long time. And we rode the you know, old fashioned swings. And so that was a lot of fun. That did not bother me. Just went you know up in the air and round in circles. So I enjoyed that and you could see all of the fair and it was a good size fair to be such a small city and to be in South Dakota. I was rather impressed. Okay, sorry you guys, I had to stop for just a couple of minutes because my husband is, technically he is on vacation today, but he is actually working. And so um, he was doing something and Molly was playing and that's our dog or Collie was playing with our cat Salem and so they're making a lot of noise and so he asked Paige to bring Molly downstairs with me so that way he can get a little bit of work done and so I just stopped brought her down here and took her outside I was hoping she could stay up there so I could get a video done so she will be nice and quiet but now she is outside, so I'm hoping that you guys can't hear her. I'm going to keep her out there. But as I was saying, I have not been to a fair in years and years and years. And that was one of my favorite things to do when I was growing up because I worked at an amusement park. And in Memphis, we had the Mid-South Fair 
and that was big. It was the biggest thing of the year. It was a really, really big deal. Now it's not, you know, of course, a lot of things that were, you know, really big back in the day isn't, and it's kind of sad, but I have always loved carnivals, you know, love, I love fair food. I'm not much of an eater, but I love fair food. I love snacks. I've always mentioned how much I love snacks, but fair food is like my thing to the point of almost getting sick because of all the different fair foods that I like to eat. I was really good though. I just got a funnel cake and Paige and I shared a funnel cake. Normally I would have gotten a corn dog and I kept saying, I have got to get a corn dog. That is my number one favorite fair food. I just love the corn dog. I don't even, I don't eat corn dogs any other time. I don't eat corn dogs ever, except at the fair. It's just something about corn dogs and mustard and the fair. And it's like, you're not really going to the fair if you don't get a corn dog. So anyway, I didn't get one because they didn't have just a regular size corn dog. They had this huge corn dog and it was kind of pricey and I thought, I don't want this big thing. And it didn't even look good. It looked almost like it was deep fried. And again, it's like, Debbie, you're not in the South right now. The food is different here. Things are cooked differently. And so I didn't get it, but I did get us a funnel cake and that was yummy, yummy, yummy. I love funnel cakes. So did get that. Madison's fiance got, um, it was bowl of corn or what they called it. And so when he was going to get it, he asked if we wanted any. And I said, is it like um, street corn? And he said, yes. And I said, is it like sweet or spicy? And he said, I think it's going to be spicy. But I, I think that you could have put like your own toppings on there. So he comes back with this corn and I don't know what he put on his, but it was, you could see it. It this He had some kind of seasoning, this sauce on there. And I said, no, I like sweet street corn and I could smell it. I'm like, oh, that even smells spicy. And so Madison took a bite of it and she's like, oh, this is awful. And he said it was really good. So he had the corn. And then he did go and get a deep fried Oreo. Now that was really good. Deep fried Oreo cookie. I've never had that before either. Never heard of deep fried Oreo cookie. And so I had a little bit of his cause it was, it was a lot. And so he was sharing that with all of us and that was really good. Madison didn't much like it. And I said, this would be really good with milk. And so he agreed with me on that one. Then he went and saw a deep fried Twinkie and he went and got one of those. And, um, he asked if we wanted some of that. And I said, does it even have like the Twinkie filling filling inside? And he said, yeah, it's, it's in there. And I'm like, oh, I don't think I want any of that. And so he had some of that and that he just got a sample. And he said it was okay, but he liked the Oreo a lot better. And then he had gotten, he and Madison had gotten something else. I forgot what it was. And that was really good too. And then um, they had turkey legs and I just didn't want any of that. So anyway, I ended up getting... I guess it was just the funnel cake that Paige and I got and it was huge. And so we had already had dinner before we were, just, we had a late lunch and I wasn't even hungry, but I said, if I want something, I will get it at the fair. And then we were there for a long time. Then there was a ride that Madison and her fiance saw. And, and he's like, I really want to ride that. It was right next to the swings. And I looked at it, I haven't seen this ride before. And Madison said she hadn't either. He hadn't either. And Paige says, I don't know if I'm going to ride that. And I said, okay, I'll ride it. So that way Paige would. 
it did not look bad. It just goes up in the air and it goes around in circles and it looked kind of like, you know, oh, the swings do. But then this thing has arms and it jets out. I wish I would have gotten the name of it, but it has arms and it jets out and then it goes faster. Okay, that didn't look very bad to me. I thought, you know what, this will work. And since I worked in rides, I was a ride supervisor for three years at a place called Liberty Land in Memphis, Tennessee, when I was growing up. And even going when I was working at, when I was in college, that was what I did too. And I know how the, the rides are supposed to sound, if it sounds weird or whatever. It's like, nah, we're not getting on it. But I listened to this one. I'm like, this sounds fine. It looks like a safe ride. Okay, let's do this. So we were all thinking, yeah, we, can, we got this. This is no big deal. We get on there and it's fine. It just goes up in the air. It goes around in circles. That doesn't bother me. Then it gets faster and faster. And I'm like, oh, I don't know about this. I'm not sure that we did a good thing. And then the arm thing jet it out and then it jets out real quick and then it goes back in really quick and then it spins around some more and i thought oh i don't know this is not looking good for the home team well then i looked at at my daughter's fiance he's not looking too good he there's a front and a back to this thing and he's not looking so good and my daughter is just looking at him kind of funny and she i don't think was enjoying it too much and then paige i asked paige because she was sitting next to me i said are you okay and she said yeah but i don't much like this and i said i don't either so we got off of that we were so dizzy and i was kind of lightheaded he went straight over to a place that was in the shade because it was still very sunny, still very hot, and he just plopped down in the shade and laid down. And I thought, mm-hmm, he's the one that just insisted that we all ride this, and yet he was looking kind of green. And we just stayed out of that for a while, went and got some lemonade. That was really good. And we didn't ride anything for a while. We thought we just got to calm down because we were all kind of feeling kind of ugh. And it was, and then I told Mass and I said, you know, it was okay. I don't feel, you know, sick or anything, but it's just not something I just feel kind of lightheaded, still felt really dizzy. I said, we need to take a break from rides for a while. Or at least Paige and I are going to take a break from rides. If y'all want to, we'll go and find something to do and we'll meet you. But they ended up, he said he had to just take a long break because he really thought that he was going to lose his cookies. Literally, because we had just had those Oreo cookies on top of that too. So that didn't help either. I'm looking for a color. And since I haven't done this one before, I don't remember where I put all of my symbols. I'm looking for a minus sign. Here we go. And I am using my credenza, which basically it is a tower. And I'm loving it, but I'm having to figure out where I put all my colors. But anyway, we found a, it wasn't a petting zoo, but we found a little place that was called Old McDonald's Farm. And it was... You know, it was still in the the actual fair, but we went there, and Madison has been having this thing lately since she's moved there about cows. She just really likes cows, and so they had a couple of cows, and they had a bull, um, and it was behind some um, fencing, and... Then they had some other animals there. They had a pot belly pig and a couple, they had a, um, some Shetland ponies and some miniature ponies. And um, you, you could go and look at them, but they said, you know, don't put your hands in um, the, the little gated area where they were and, um, or their pens and you couldn't touch them. So we were there for a little bit, took some pictures and then there was a donkey that was also there. 
and the donkey stared at me and just started making all kinds of noises and um, weird noises and had um, its teeth showing, but it was laughing like it was like a, like it had this weird laugh. And so we were kind of, you know, talking to the donkey for a little bit. So anyway, we left there and we found a petting zoo. And we spent so much time at this petting zoo because you could spend X amount and get cups of this food and you could pet the animals. They had tons of sheep in there. They had two llamas. Um, they had a camel and a cow and a zebra. So we went in there, we bought some food and the sheep were following you around like crazy. They were trying to steal the cup from you. So you had to hold the cup up and then you had to put the feed in the palm of your hands so they would eat out of the palm of your hands and not get the entire cup. And so I had sheep that were jumping on me, you know, putting their paws on my legs. And so I was petting them and playing with them and we were, you know, feeding them. And so that was a lot of fun. And then I am kind of scared of llamas and Paige is too. So they had this llama that was taller than me that kept following me around everywhere. And I was determined I'm not going to feed this llama. If I don't feed the llama, then the llama might just go away. No, this llama kept following us. Even though we weren't feeding this llama, the llama kept following us and kept sniffing and kept um, wanting to be close to us. And so I ended up feeding the llama, but I'm kind of scared of llamas because I know that llamas spit. And at one time, there was a llama that lived um, in the same city that the kids grew up in before I moved to the Kennesaw area. And this was a person's llama. And we um, were able to go and play with this llama because we knew the person. But the llama wasn't, didn't do it out of meanness or spite. This llama loved to spit and it would just look at you and it would just spit. You didn't have any warning. You didn't know until after it spit at you. And I just thought that was absolutely disgusting. And so I did not want this huge llama to spit at us. I thought, I just, I don't like that. It is just gross and llamas can be aggressive. But this llama was so sweet, so I just went ahead and I did feed it. They had another llama that was a very dark brown llama. And the llama's head had a full head of hair that looked just like a toupee. Almost like Groucho Marx from way, way back in the day when my mom was younger. And, you know, I had seen, like, pictures and stuff of Groucho Marx. And... So I told Madison, I said, look at this llama. Now this one looks like he has a little dew going on. And so we were sitting there playing with this llama's hair and I was feeding that llama. And then the llama would kind of bend down its head and I thought it's about to raise its head up and it's about to just spit. But it never did. But that's one thing I was worried about. And I've never, ever, 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 ever fed a camel. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to be brave. I went and I fed this camel and it felt really, really, really weird. Um, but the camel, you had to put the, the food, you know, in your hand and the camel's tongue would veer out. And I thought, oh, this is just so strange. The first time uh, and Madison took a picture, I had the weirdest look on my face. It was so funny. And then I also fed the zebra. I've never done that before either. Fed a cow. And so we just had the absolute best time in the petting zoo. And of course, when we went out, they did have um, little sinks and hand sanitizer. And so we really cleaned our hands really good. But that was a lot of fun. So we really enjoyed the petting zoo. And then my daughter weighs like 101 pounds. She is just really, really skinny and she eats. I mean, that girl can eat, 
but she wanted to ride the ponies and she went and talked to you know, the ponies that are in the little circle that you know they're together and you know little three and four year olds ride this little pony you know and the parents hold the kids um or they you know have the kids or right they walk with the pony so Maston went and she's like it says that the limit on here is a hundred pounds and she's like i would love to ride this could i please ride a pony and the guy looked at her and started busting out laughing and he's like, you know, and he even weighed her. He's like, I don't believe. And he weighed her. He's like, yeah, you are small. He said, but he said, and you would be just fine on this one horse. It wouldn't be a problem. But he said, I might get fired if they see that there is an adult riding on these ponies. So she ended up not riding on the pony. After the petting zoo and my daughter wanting to ride a pony, which I thought was absolutely hilarious, um, I... We ended up riding the Ferris wheel, which I enjoy that, but we rode the Ferris wheel actually twice. And the second time, I was getting a little nervous because we waited until it had gotten dark and because we thought it'd be really pretty to ride the Ferris wheel at night. So the second time we were on there, we were going round and round for a long time. And then I even mentioned, you know, this ride's lasting quite a long time. And then it stopped at the top, and it took us forever to get back down to get off. I don't know if they were just letting people off, and it was just taking a long time, but I was starting to get a little nervous. And my daughter has anxiety, and she was getting nervous about it too. And she said, I don't like being up here like this. We've been just sitting um, at the top, has not moved, you know, for several minutes. And so I didn't want her to know that I was concerned, but I just told her, I said, you know, it's okay. We just, just look and look at the lights, look how pretty that the fair looks at night. And then we would move, you know, one, one rung up or whatever, and then it would be a little bit longer and then we'd move again, move again. And so we finally got off of that and we did ride the bumper cars. They rode it, I think three times. I rode it twice. And I was going to get on the bumper cars. I was doing something else when they were about to get back on the, on the bumper cars. And I'm looking for another color. And they, we got, we went and got into the cars. And I was walking past my oldest, Maddie. And so she's like, Mama, come here. So I thought she wanted me to get into the car next to hers. And she's like, no, I want us to ride together. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. You want me, you want me to ride with you on the bumper cars? And so she said, yes. And, I, and she said, unless you just want to drive. But she said, I want, I want you to ride with me. I want to drive you around. I'm like, okay, fine. So I rode with her. And then we kept, you know, bumping Paige and bumping her fiance and bumping everybody else. And so that was a lot of fun. And then after we got off of that, Paige said, well, I see you um, rode with Madison. Did you not want to drive? And I said, no, Maddie wanted me to ride with her. Well, we're going to have to do it again now. So that meant because I had ridden with Madison, Paige wanted to ride with me. And I said, do you want me to drive or do you want to drive? And she's like, oh, no, I'm going to drive you. So she did, and she actually did a pretty good job in um, bumper cars. She likes the bumper cars. I didn't think that she would, but she kept getting and wanting to get on the bumper cars. So we did that, I guess, I guess it was about three times. And then we did ride the Himalaya, which is like a bobsled. Now, that did not bother me at all. I have been on that multiple times. The only thing that bothered me is that Paige was on the inside of the ride. I was on the outside, so she kept slamming into me. Now I have a huge bruise on my hip and my leg, but that was fine. It's not that it really hurt. It was just, just what happens on that ride. And that was really all the rides that we rode. Um, the kids did go on the slide um, once, the large slide. And then Madison and her fiance did go on a ride that um, it's like, I guess, Tower of Terror, 
if you know anything about Disney, you just go straight up and then it just plummets all of a sudden. And so Madison really didn't want to do that. And her fiance is like, no, that's the only thing I really want to do. And she's like, okay, because you want to do that, um, I'll do it with you. And I, I asked him, I said, you mean you're willing to do that, but you almost lost it on that other swingy ride. And he said, yeah, I don't think this will be nearly as bad as that. And I said, you are crazy. So they want to know if I wanted to ride it. And I'm like, have you lost your mind? Absolutely not. There is no way in this world I'm going to ride that thing. So Paige, I knew she wouldn't do it either. And she didn't. So we watched them and we took pictures and a video and so Madison got off of that ride and her legs were just shaking. She said she was scared to death. And she's kind of a daredevil on some things. And she, she was really scared on that one. And then she ended up riding it the second time before we left. She's like, okay, I'll do it one more time because he wanted to. And she wasn't as scared that time as she was the first time, but she was still shaking pretty good when she got off of it. I'm like, why would you do that to yourself? We did go into the fun house and most of the, the upstairs part on the fun house, you know, it's the one that has like the, you know, moving sidewalks and the barrels you have to walk through and that kind of thing and the mirrors and stuff. And most of that wasn't even working, so it was kind of a waste um, to go in there. But you paid one price, and you could ride unlimited rides, you know, all day. So we didn't have to worry about that. We did play a game. They like the one where you have um, the clown, and then you um, will compete against other people on the game. And then do you have a squirter. You squirt the nose of the clown. And the clown that gets to the top wins a prize. Well, again, when I worked at Liberty Land, I knew a lot of people that worked in games. And that stuff is rigged. I mean, it is so rigged. You on that one, and I told my daughter, I'm like, I'm just telling you. And I told her fiance, and he's like, oh, that, just, that can't be right. And I'm like, it is. These things are rigged. And on the one that has the clown with the water, the person that is running the game, they can adjust it to where, and you can't see it, but you can adjust it where if you see somebody that you really want to win, you can make their water stream out harder or to that it's faster even though it doesn't look it. And so I told Madison, I'm like, that's what happens. They don't have to do that, but they can. If there's someone that they want to win or if they don't want you to win, they can adjust some things and it makes it really hard for you to win. So we were kept going back and forth and it was, I think it was like $6 um, to play this. No, it was $10 per person to play this game. And I'm like, that is really high, and it's a ripoff. And so we were talking to the lady, and then I thought, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. And so Madison said, I'm not going to pay $10 for that one game. So then the lady was talking to Madison's fiance and said, well, right now it's slow. If all four of you will play, then one of you will get a prize, and you can pick out any prize. It doesn't have to be a small prize. You don't have to trade in a prize to get a bigger prize and you'll know, keep playing to get whatever. She said, you can get whatever you want to, one of you will win. And so Kyle said, are you sure that one of us will win? What if somebody else wants to pop in? And she said, I guarantee you, one of you will win. And I said, see, there you go. She's gonna make sure if someone else plays, that person's not gonna win, one of us will. And it's rigged. So anyway, we had a good time, but Madison won and she got a frog. Paige was really close, but then Paige took her, she quit looking at the, the clown's nose. And so 
she would have won if she didn't if she didn't take her her if she didn't quit looking at the at the owl oh my gosh if she didn't quit looking at the clown so and the woman even said that she's like ah you were really close i saw you but you just quit looking and madison won so she um picked out a frog stuffed animal and then she told Paige, she said, if you want to, we can play again. And she said, um, if I win, then you can get whatever you want to. And so Paige said no. And Madison said, well, you can go ahead and pick out this time. You can have um, whatever. And so Paige said, no, that was yours. You decide, you know, you need to pick something out. And so Madison did pick the frog out. And it was really cute. So we did that. And we were there for a really long time, but we were all getting tired, we were getting hot, and then on Sunday morning, um, Kyle picked up a shift at work, and he was going to have to get up early, and so um, we ended up staying and still until about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, and then they had to drop us off. So that was a really fun night, and then that was on Saturday. And then on Sunday, and also on Saturday before we went to, I forgot, on Saturday before we went to the, the fair, we went to a cat cafe. I had never been to a cat cafe. I've heard of them. Didn't really know how it was set up. But we went to this cat cafe, and you can order coffee or tea and then they had like some cookies and other little things in the cafe part and then if you wanted to go and pet and play with the cats then you couldn't take you could take your coffee in there your drink but you couldn't take any food and you had to pay to go in there and spend some time with the cats so we decided to do it and they had 15 cats most of them were kittens they did have one resident cat who lives there permanently and they said she keeps all the kittens in line and you can't adopt her but you can adopt anybody else in their little cat area and it was called catitude i thought that is the coolest place of you know, have a name for a cat and it was in downtown and their downtown is not like our downtown, so it was, it was funny. But we did that, and we, we played with the kittens. And there was one, it was a black cat. And of course it was, because I just have this thing for black cats. Our cat is black. And I don't know, I just have a thing for black cats. And this little kitten was curled up on a... It was like a little hammock, but it was a little cat tree. And went over there, and the cat just started purring like crazy before I even touched it. So I sat there, and I was petting that cat for a long time. And then she fell asleep while I was petting her. And she was still purring while she was asleep. But I thought this, I didn't really even touch any, very many of the other cats. And then some were hiding, some were up. In the top of a cat tree where you couldn't get to them but when the cats needed a break they had little holes in little cutouts in one of the walls and that's where their water um, was and that's where their litter boxes were but we had a really good time with that too so I mean we were really busy and then on Monday I told my daughter, I'm like, look, we have been going just crazy, just going, going, going the whole time that we've been here, and I don't think I can go anymore. I am just about tired. And so she said that they were too, and Paige was too, and he worked until noon. So she picked us up around 11-ish. And then we um, went to Target and looked around, got some things there that she needed. And then we also went to their mall. And their mall is a lot nicer than ours. And she lives in a very small area in South Dakota, but they had a really nice mall 
We went to Bath and Body Works, and both of my kids love Bath and Body Works. That is like their place. And we were there for a long time. They already had Fallout. So Paige bought a bunch of stuff, and she said, I'm going to buy you something. I'm gonna, I had three things that I was getting because it was buy two, get one free. And I had three items, and she said, I'm going to pay for yours today. I want to pay for yours. And so I said, okay, fine. If that's what you want to do, um, you know, you can. And so, because she kept going on and on. I usually won't let her do that. I'm like, okay, fine. You can do that. So we did that. And then we left the mall. and just well, We kind of looked around the mall, and that was about it. We left the mall, and we just hung out at their place for a little bit. And then they cooked ramen, which we love ramen. And that was the one and only time that we ate at their place. We went out every other time. And that was really good. And then after we left there, Madison did spend the night on Sunday night. So we had like a little slumber party in our hotel. And Madison slept with me because we can't sleep with Paige. She kicks and she hurts. She kicks in her sleep. And so Madison's like, oh, I'm, I'm with you. So we had like a little slumber party. We haven't done that in like years and years. And we had some snacks, watched the movie and, you know, laid in bed and watched the movie. And we also went down. There was nobody at the pool and nobody at the hot tub. So Madison's like, it cannot be that cold in the pool like you two say. So she just jumps in and she comes out and she's almost blue. And she's like, um, yeah, it is cold. And she wasn't going to tell about that. She said, if you, get, if you jump in, it's not so bad. And so Madison got in the one time. And then Paige got in a couple of times. And they played for just a few minutes in the pool. And that was about it on the pool. And Madison's like, that's just ridiculous that their pool is just so cold. But they had fun. And then we left and went back upstairs into our room. And that's when we watched a movie and had some snacks. And then we woke up the next day and Madison took us to the airport and I tell you, that's when the crazy began was at the airport. And that is why I am late on my whip and chat. I am trying to get back on my schedule since I have been off my schedule all summer on videos. But I'm trying to get back to where my videos are going to post at 9 o'clock on specific days. And my whip and chat usually goes out at nine o'clock on Tuesday morning. And I don't know if you're gonna get this on Tuesday late in the evening or if you're gonna get this on Wednesday because we had flight issues. And I mentioned this on my last whip and chat before we left, that every time Madison comes home or goes back, she has problems in Minnesota. Um, and we had problems, and it wouldn't have been in Minnesota to start out. But it started out at the very beginning. We get on the flight out of South Dakota. Everything is looking good. We, um, are, we were told that it's going to even be probably earlier than expected that we're going to get there. Awesome, 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 because that would give us a little more time. We had 50 minutes that we had a layover at St. Paul. So we thought, we've got this. Everything is good. We are about to leave, and then... Bam, everything in the plane just shut down. It's like, you know, they lost power. There was no power. There was no AC. We, um, there was no electrical. And I'm like, oh, crap. So then we waited and waited and waited and waited. And so finally, they, they had someone that was there. Um, we heard the pilots talking 
and we were sitting there starting to get hot because we didn't even pull out of the gate. We lost power before we even pulled out of the gate. So then the pilot gets on the intercom and says, I'm sure you guys are wondering what's happening, blah, blah, blah. We're going to be leaving here shortly. And he said it was something about their secondary auxiliary power. And he said, you know, like, um, like in most electronic devices, the best way to check it and to see if it will um, go back online is just simply turn it off and turn it back on. But it takes time once you turn it off to reboot it. And I thought, well, that gives me all warm and fuzzies because the weather was getting bad because of the tropical storm. And I was starting to worry about that. It was starting to rain there. And he said, it's going to be bumpy going. And it was an hour. It was an hour flight from South Dakota to Minnesota to um, change flights. But because we had the technical issues and then we got into the bad storm, it wasn't nearly as bumpy as he said that it was going to be, but they had to go around the storm. So we got in at, at St. Paul, we got in at 1230 and they had just closed the door on our connecting flight like five minutes before that. And so the agent called the gate and asked if they had already closed, if we could get on, told them the situation, and they said no. They've already closed the gate once they close the, or the close a plane. And once they do close the plane, they hadn't closed the plane door, but they had closed it to where you couldn't get on the whatever you call the, the walkway to get to the, the door of the plane or to get on the plane. And so they wouldn't let us do it. So they said, you can get on the next flight. And I looked at the app. They had already changed, rerouted our flight for us, rerouted us. They had us going, which was really, really stupid. They had us going to Detroit, having a three-hour layover in Detroit, and then from Detroit going to Atlanta. So we were going to have to deal with two more flights. And I thought, no, because there's bad weather in Detroit, and I don't want to get stuck in Detroit, of all places. And I don't want to have to get on two more planes in order to get home. So I asked if I went up to another agent and asked if there was any other flights besides that one. That one did not leave until 830 that um, Monday night. And it was only 1230. So I thought there's got to be something else. And so she looked it up for me and she's like, well, I'm going to, she said, there's one at six that leaves at 615 and it goes um, straight to Atlanta. Okay, great. Well, she went ahead and was very nice, upgraded us to first class. I don't know if it was because they didn't have any more seats on the 615 or if she was just being nice because normally they don't do that. So she upgraded us for free to first class. She thought, oh, first class, that's nice. And they were going to have dinner at 615 and you could choose what you wanted for your dinner. So we did all of that. Well, we had to kill time again from 1230 until about 530. And so we did all of that. Thank goodness I had my computer and Paige did too. So I watched several videos, YouTube videos that I had gotten behind on. I actually did a little bit of work so that was really nice. Got all of that taken care of. And that time went pretty quick between 12.30 and 1.15. They had even given us a voucher, a food voucher that we could use. So we did that. And then we went up there at 5.30. And it said on my app that the the flight was on time. 
So we get up there and then they say there is a delay. Well, the delay kept getting wider and wider. At first it was seven o'clock. Okay, that's not too bad. We've waited this long. What's, you know, a couple more minutes. And then they said at like 7.15 that they were waiting on the crew. That the plane had actually been there for three hours just sitting, but it was waiting on the crew. That the crew was coming from south um from where did they say was um actually coming from detroit so okay and it kept getting longer and longer and longer and they kept saying yes we've, we've got the we have the crew here we're waiting now on the pilots the pilots are coming from the pilots are actually um, coming from Detroit. And then they said, oh, well, the pilots somehow missed the flight coming from Detroit. They didn't get on the flight. They're getting on the next flight. Kept getting later and later and later. And they kept using the same excuse. And I'm like, you can't keep using this excuse, dude, because you've been using this all day long. Well, to make a even longer story halfway short, Paige and I ended up leaving St. Paul at midnight. Well, we got on the plane at like 1130. And we finally got out of there around midnight. Well, we didn't get the dinner on first class because they said that it had been sitting for so long that they were afraid to serve it. So we got nice snacks. The snacks were nicer than what you would get, you know, if you were just flying coach. And I didn't care because I didn't pay for first class. It was nice to be in first class. I did get a drink. I don't normally do that, but I'm like, we have three hours before we get home. I'm just going to have a mimosa, which I did. And it was really good by the time I got to, or my car it had been five hours, because once I, we had gotten there, we had to go and figure out about our luggage. Our luggage had gotten back to Atlanta around five o'clock on Monday, without us, of course. And our luggage was over, that they had taken it off the conveyor belt. Thank goodness no one just walked off with our luggage. And they had it over in their storage area, which with a lot of other people had the same thing. So we did all of that, finally got our luggage. We had to go to the park and ride. And here we are at three o'clock in Atlanta. Not on a really good road in Atlanta because the airport's not in that great of an area. And so the good thing about where we parked is that the shuttle bus takes you right to your car. They make sure you get in your car safe. And so that was nice. And then we finally pulled in our driveway at like 4.45 this morning. That would be Tuesday morning. I was absolutely exhausted. I came in and told my husband. My husband woke up. I made sure it was us that was coming in the house. And then I told him, I'm going to go lay down for just a little bit. He um, was on vacation today. And so I laid down for a little while, um, about five o'clock, woke up at nine and got up, started doing some things because I was supposed to be working today, did some stuff. And I was going to go ahead and do a video early this morning. And I thought, I just can't. I've got to wake up. And I sounded awful. And so I waited until later on, on Tuesday, to make my video. So that's what my crazy week was like. But I had so much fun. I mean, usually I am just at home, don't do very much. And we just had the best time. And then I have 
I've been around my daughter's fiance, Kyle, um, several times, um, obviously, but not just like hours and hours on end like we had for this trip, even though they've been get together, I think four years, going on four years. But, you know, we haven't spent just a lot of time. And so the, so the very first night on Thursday night, he told Madison, he's like, you and your mom are like twins. You are a mini me of her. And he said, you know, pages too, but nothing like you. He said, now I get it. Now I get why you two are so close and you are so upset. And you know, whenever you are, um, you have, whenever you have to tell your mom bye. And I, I, he said, I get it now. I see it. And so it was so funny because before Madison told me that on Friday, I was telling her, I don't know how it came up, but I said, yeah, Dave says that, you know, me and you are just alike and I'll do something. And he'll say, that sounds like a Madison moment. And then that's when Kyle burst out laughing. He's like, we were just, I was just mentioning that on Thursday to Madison that you two are just like two peas in a pod. And then Paige even agreed. She said, they've always been this way as long as I've known them. I'm like, well, you've known me forever since you were born and your sister too, because you're the youngest. And so we all got a kick out of that. But it was just so funny. But then once again, whenever I had to leave on Monday, it was like super, super hard to tell her bye. It was hard for her too. But I will see her maybe in December. She really would like to come back home for Christmas. But she doesn't know if she'll be able to because she will be in school. And she starts nursing school on the 20th of this month. And she doesn't know if she'll be, she'll be on break then, but because she's having to really change her schedule around a lot for work, then she may have to work. But she is going with her dad and Paige has now agreed to go. Paige wasn't going to go, but they are going to go in January to Disney. And so Madison's going to fly into Atlanta and meet them at the airport. So unless I drive all the way to the airport just to see her for just, you know, a few minutes, then I will not see her in January. And I'm not going to do that because it's just too hard in Atlanta to be able to, to stop in just to see somebody like that. Atlanta, just, the parking is just horrible in Atlanta. So that was my week. Normally I don't have that much that we did, but it was so much fun. And I didn't even diamond paint. I took a Paint Gym mini set. I thought we can do that in the evenings. And I wish I would have had it at the airport yesterday when I was stuck for all those hours. But I had packed it into our suitcase and didn't have it with me. So when I got home and I started, woke up, did a few things around the house, went ahead and unpacked and then decided I'm going to go down into my craft room and just diamond paint a little bit because I really wanted to get a jump start or you know, a late start, I guess, to this canvas. And I thought, okay, I am now feeling like I can do a whip and chat. So that's kind of what I did today. And as far as diamond painting, what I'm going to be doing this week, I do have a lot of work that's due this week, but I will still be able to diamond paint every day. As far as I can tell, nothing is really going on um, this week. We are in between semesters at work, but I have to get my classes together. I also teach at a part-time school and it's a busy week this week for my part-time that I do. And then also I taught at another school online a few years ago and last year they, I asked them if they needed anything and 
they put me back on their list, but they didn't offer me anything. And so now they're offering me a class because they're going from eight weeks to five weeks on their semesters. So now I'm going to be busy doing that too. We'll see how that goes. So I'm going to be busy with work, but I'm not making any plans on going anywhere else except we're going out of town in December. That, um, so that's the only thing really. And then I do have a work trip that I go on in August every year. August or not August. Oh my gosh. Actually, it's September, October. We start in August talking about it. And then it's either September or October. It's just for a weekend and it's close to home. So that won't be that bad. It's for our um, state leadership for a organization that I am in at work. And I have to take students with me and we compete. But other than that, I have no other plans. I am ready for the fall. I am so ready for the fall. Started looking at some fall canvases to see what exactly I have in my stash. So I do have an unboxing um, that came in while I was gone that I am looking forward to doing. I'm hoping that that's going to go out on Thursday. And I'm not sure on Saturday yet because I have not planned the video what I'm going to be doing on Saturday. I will not have a finish by then, I don't think. I am close on Bubble Girl of a completion, but I don't know if I will have it completed for a video by Saturday. If so, that will be my Saturday video. If not, I have several other types of videos that I've been thinking about. had plenty of time to think about it yesterday. And so that was, that was kind of helpful because I was able to write several things down. Um, I will have to do some work on some of them before I can record them. But there's one I might be able to do. So I'm kind of thinking in that direction. I'm also thinking about my cross stitch conversion and doing another whip and chat on that one. I think you guys really like that too, where I do go and answer responses, make comments. That one didn't get as much of a showing or like liking the last time that I did it. So I don't know how popular that that one is. And since this video is going to be quite long, this whip and chat, I don't know if you guys would like to have two long whip and chats on the same week. Other than that, I don't have anything else going on. I will probably, the one that I'm going to unbox on Thursday, I am thinking on that one to do an unboxing and a kitting up. And that will be a longer video as well. So let me know in the comments if you would like to have an unboxing and a kitting up together. I definitely want to get that one kitted up. I want to get started on it. And or if you'd rather see just an unboxing and a kitting up separate. So definitely let me know. And another question that I had was let me know if you like county fairs or state fairs, I guess. And what do you like to do at the state fairs? Let me know how you're doing also because I always like to know what everybody is doing because it's not all about me. I know it sounds like it because I'm always talking about things that we're doing, but I always want to 
to know what you guys are doing too and to get to know you guys better. I think that is just a lot of the fun and part of community is getting to know people. I have also been really noodling around if I want to do like a live and if I did a live would Fridays work for everyone or like around lunchtime on Fridays or is that not a good time for everybody? Would a nighttime be better? Nights are just a little bit more difficult for me because I do have things going on with my family. Um, also, I um, sometimes I will have student conferences that I have at night. And then I am going to be getting back to my card group soon as well, the end of August. Paige's birthday is coming up this Saturday. We have some plans for that. She loves to bowl. We're going to, I think we're going to take her bowling and take her to one of her favorite restaurants. And then she already knows what she's getting for a gift. So we're going to go pick that up, let her pick it out. We're going to do that this week. So it's going to be another busy week just for that, but can't believe both of my kids now. They're getting so old. I shouldn't say old. They're not getting old. They're getting older. But it's really, it's fun to have kids that are now adults because, you know, you can have just, you can talk to them. Like, you know, of course, things that I say to them now, I wouldn't dare have done when they were little kind of thing. And it's just a lot of fun. To do things, you know, together. I was always worried my kids grow up, you know, they're going to ignore me and, you know, they're not going to have anything to do with me, but that's not the case at all. And it was fun to travel with Paige. I've never traveled with just the two of us before. She was really, really good. I was very impressed, especially yesterday. I thought, this is not going to work. She's going to be anxious because she's going to want to go home. She knows that we're stuck here. And she was really good up until about 45 minutes before we boarded. And then she was starting in, I want to go home, Mom. I'm ready to go home. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of sitting here. I'm tired of all these people. And she had a lady that was next to her that was kind of annoying. She was on the phone laughing and cutting, or actually was on a, I don't know if she was on Zoom or if she was on FaceTime or what, but she was talking to a friend of hers almost the entire time that we were sitting there. There was no other seats in the area that we needed to be in, but she did. I was, she did really well. I was really proud of her. And then she got on the plane and she did sleep for about 30 minutes and that's all that she slept on the plane. But I was very proud of her because I was so worried that she was really going to lose it, get very anxious and have like a panic attack. And she didn't. So I was really, really excited. But we have gotten some bad weather because of the now tropical storm. And of course, the tropical storm has to be named after me. Not named after me, but it's named the same as me. This is the second time that there's been a tropical storm, or actually it was a Hurricane Debbie. And we're going to be getting quite a bit of rain from it. And Savannah, Georgia has really gotten hit hard. They've already um, been declared an emergency in that area. My husband works for one of our utility companies here and he has been on he was on the phone a lot yesterday and today on things that the guys needed and they were asking him exactly what did he what did they need the size of different parts and different things so he's been really busy dealing with that one of the reasons why he was working on his time off so anybody that's in the wake of the storm I'm really thinking about you guys, and if any of you had to travel, 
Uh, I feel for you because I know a lot of people were stuck. We got lucky that we got one of the last flights out yesterday. When we got to Atlanta, there were people that were sleeping on the floor in Atlanta. They were curled up sleeping on the floor, but Atlanta was very quiet, which was really it was kind of spooky because we had gotten in so late or early, whichever one that you want to, to say. So if you are in the path of that horrible tropical storm, I am definitely thinking about you. Hope that you are okay. Hope that you didn't have any damage to any of your home, your homes, or you know, any of your personal belongings. I don't think anybody that I know of in Savannah evacuated, but they're having a lot of flooding. I think I'm going to call it good here. I've almost finished two sections of this um, between talking to you guys and then starting on it this morning. And I keep moving this over. For some reason, this particular painting, I hope you, didn't, I hope you were able to see most of it, this particular painting that I'm working on, it keeps sliding around really bad. And I'm, I guess I need to put something down on, on my actual canvas so that it doesn't slide so much. So if you were trying to watch and it was sliding quite a bit, then I do apologize for that. I was trying to watch and make sure that everything was okay. But this is going to be more of darker colors. I'm going to move this down and almost do it again. It's just the way that this is, it's kind of a stiffer canvas. But it is going to be really pretty. But look at those colors. That's definitely a different color scheme than what I've been working on lately. And I am all about it. I like the neutral color scheme of this right now. Thanks so much for joining me. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. I think that you will like it here. And if you click on that notification bell, you'll be notified of any future uploads. I have several upcoming videos, as I mentioned, planned. I just have to find the time to get uh, some of these things together in order to get certain videos out. Um, but definitely am looking forward to that. I love the fall, so be looking for um, some unboxings, whether it's in my stash or a couple that I have recently purchased. I don't really have any small shop hauls. I have a couple of things that I've purchased, some pins um, and a couple of trays, but that's not really enough to have as a small shop haul. I don't plan on purchasing anything else in August or September because I did spend quite a bit on this trip. I hope you have a great day and until next time, happy diamond painting. Bye.